Hey guys, it's Sarah. So today's video is going to be my monthly shop my stash video. The last few months what I've been doing is going through my collection and picking out the products on camera and then actually creating a look with them. Um, I used to do kind of like an everyday makeup drawer and what I'm doing now is kind of just keeping my current project pan and eyeshadow roulette products in my everyday makeup drawer. That's what this is right now, along with some other products that I just use every day. And so for my shop, my stash, it's just kind of a chance for me to create a look with some products that maybe I've been neglecting or sometimes I'll have kind of a theme for my shop, my stash, but um, it's not really for putting together a monthly makeup basket that I'm going to be working out of throughout the month. Uh, just because I kind of like to have free roam of my makeup collection throughout the month and since I have a lot of products in my project pan and a lot of eyeshadows that I'm already focusing on, I'd rather just focus on those instead of having another monthly makeup basket on top of that. So anyway, hopefully that makes sense. But for this video, I kind of just wanted to focus on some neglected products, products that maybe I haven't used in a while. So I may end up picking out some products from this drawer, but let's go ahead and start with some of the other drawers and then we'll probably come back to this one. Also, it did just start raining and storming outside so hopefully you can enjoy the peaceful sounds of the storm that's going on but let's see so this is my kind of base drawer for foundation so like I said I want to focus on products that maybe haven't been getting enough love lately so I think I might let's see the Pacifica a light foundation this one I definitely haven't used in a little while here so I kind of want to use this one and then for primer I think I'm still going to use my project pan primer which is the covergirl vitalist go glow primer um, those are nice together I do like pairing a glowy primer with this foundation so let's do that since that foundation is really full coverage I like to pair it with a full coverage concealer so I think I'm gonna use my elf 16 hour camo concealer this also I haven't used in a little while lately I've been using my Too Faced born this way a lot just cuz I don't know it's I think it's my oldest one so I'm kind of just trying to focus on it but this one does need some love so let's use that one I think I'm gonna skip setting spray I only own one setting spray it's this NYX one um, yeah, I don't really feel like I need setting spray today, so let's go ahead and move on to my next drawer, which is powders and also cheek products. I'll probably just use my Physician's Formula Healthy Powder since it's in my project pan. Really trying to hit pan on this. I still haven't gotten there, so that's the one I want to focus on. For bronzer, let's see. I think in my last Shop My Stash, I used my Milani bronzer. I've also been using my... Jordana bronzer a lot, so I don't really have any like neglected bronzers. I've kind of been rotating through them all. I only own like, what, three bronzers? So I think I'll use my Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer just because this is also in my project pan. I probably will be incorporating several of my project pan items in this look, but not all of them. And then let's see, blush. Hmm. I think I want to use a cream blush because those always seem to get neglected, even though I really like using cream products. I usually reach for powder. I don't know why. It's just my go-to. So I, yeah, I think I might use my flower. I'm trying to think of what kind of eye look I'm going to do. It's probably going to be... I actually think I'm going to use a green shadow for this look. So I'm thinking a peachy blush would go really well with that. So let's do that. I'm going to do my flower blush balm just because I really like this product, but for how much I like it, I really haven't been reaching for it very much. So I feel like this one really deserves some attention right now. And then for highlighter, definitely not my Becca one. I've been using this one like nonstop. I love this highlighter. This is um, Champagne Pop. It's just, it's so good. Never fails me. But let's do, you know what, let's do my Aether Beauty one. This one I used in my full face of most expensive products, but other than that, I haven't been using this one as much as my others. And I think that since this is kind of also a warm highlighter, it'll go well with that warm blush. So let's do that. And I think that is all for this drawer. Unless I want to do a contour. Do I want to do contour? I don't think so. Let's skip that today. Then I have my kind of eye drawer. Everything eyes except for eyeshadow palettes. And okay, so today, this is not only a neglected product, but it's a product that I do want to use because it is from a black owned company. I have realized over the last few days that I really do not own very many products from black owned brands. And so that's going to be changing soon. I really, that's something I should have been prioritizing for forever. But this is from a brand called Dimension Nails. They do specialize in nail polishes and nail products, but they do make, I think, some like eyeshadows. So this is a loose eyeshadow. 
in the shade Nori and it was actually done in collaboration with my friend Jay Holmey. She has a YouTube channel. I've had it for a couple years and honestly I don't use it very often just because I don't wear green eyeshadow very often. It's this beautiful like emerald green and also it's a loose shadow and so for some reason I just don't reach for it even though it's beautiful. So we're gonna play with that today. Let's see, you know also this e.l.f. liquid shadow in soft beige. I think this is part of their like beautifully bare line. This I also don't use. It's kind of like an eyeshadow base. This has not gotten enough use lately, but it's just like this peachy base. Would that go well with the green? Mm, maybe not today. I think this I'll pick out and use sometime soon. In fact, let me go ahead and put it in my top drawer just so I'll remember to use it, but not today. So this is my palette drawer, and then I also pulled out some of my eyeshadow roulette colors that I may also incorporate. There is a purple. I don't want to do like purple and green or anything. Um, the purple is the one in this Billy Beauty palette, so I'm not going to use that, but I'm thinking maybe this gold, the brown, some of these orangey warm colors might be pretty. So let's pull this and maybe use some of those. Um, there's also Soft Glam. This has some really good like peachy matte colors that might work well in the crease. Trying to think of what colors to use with the green. I'm thinking something maybe like orange soda or burnt orange, which actually is one of my roulette colors this month. So yeah, we'll see about that. And then another shade in here that's in my roulette is Daring. This is the e.l.f. Opposites Attract palette. I may use some shades out of here too, like maybe Fresh or Saucy, Happy, some of those for just like crease colors. So we'll see, those might work. I think I'll try to work from these palettes just because they're in my current roulette rotation. So yeah, I don't think I'll pull any anything else out of here, at least for now. Um, hopefully I can create a full look with the green and at least some like matte shades in here. All right, and then here is my lip drawer. Usually I like to pick out a few lip options and kind of play it by ear and just pick whichever one seems to go best with the eye look. So let's pick a few. Thinking this Dose of Colors gloss in On Repeat um, might be a good color to pair with the green. Also, um, my Red Apple lipstick in Beachside is a nice kind of tan nude. I think that might be really pretty with the green. These are definitely two that I haven't been using a ton recently, so they could use some attention right now. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll stick with those and then hopefully one of these will work. All right, and then I just pulled out some other products that I use every day. My brow products, my mascara, my under eye setting powder, whoops, and my um, eye primer. So I think that should be everything we need. Okay, so first of all, you guys know I cut my hair recently and cut it myself. I actually did make an appointment to get it touched up because it's kind of uneven and just, it's not sitting quite right, you know what I mean? So I just wanted to show you guys, I've been trying to curl it. This is my third attempt at curling it. And this is what it looks like. Like, I just cannot get it to look good when I curl it. Which is why I've been having it kind of in a half up, half down situation in a lot of my recent videos. So I can't wait to get it actually cut by a real person, by a real stylist. Um, but I'm gonna maybe pin back this section. Also, because I'm gonna be doing makeup, so I wanna have it out of my face, but anyway. Um, yeah, it's been a little bit of a struggle. Let's go ahead and get into the makeup. Um, I do, let's see, it's been a few hours since I applied my sunscreen. It's like afternoon now. So I am going to reapply my sunscreen today. I'm wearing the Bare Republic Mineral uh, Sunscreen it's a Tinted Version. This will be included in my upcoming sunscreen review video. I've got six different sunscreens that I tested out, so I'm gonna be showing all about them. I think that video should be going up on Saturday if all goes according to plan. So definitely subscribe if you want to see that. I tested out this one, the new one from Versed, the Supergoop Glow Screen, just a bunch of different cruelty-free sunscreens. Got three chemical, three mineral, so a nice distribution of sunscreens. So I'm really excited to share about them. They are leaps and bounds better than last year's six that I tried. <laughs> like so much better. I feel like the sunscreen industry has made so many improvements in just the last year, which is really exciting. So that is a very matte sunscreen and I do want to let it 
set before I start applying makeup just so it, I give it some time to like set up on my skin. I do have something really exciting and adorable to share with you guys at the end of this video. It is a new family member, that's all I'm gonna say. So just stay tuned for the end, and uh, I know not everyone is obviously watching this video for that, so we'll save that for the end, but you'll see. Let's go ahead and start with this CoverGirl primer. This is so close to being done that I really just wanted to use this today, also because it goes really nicely with that Pacifica foundation. Obviously th this isn't really a neglected product. Actually, I did kind of neglect it last month, which is why I didn't finish it by my June update, so. I guess you could say it is kind of a neglected product, but I do, I really like this primer. I actually think I'm gonna miss it when it's gone, but I have other hydrating primers that I also like, so it's fine. I actually think that they might have discontinued this product, or at least it's very hard to find. Whenever I try to link it for a video in my description box, I have a very hard time finding it, so. Like I said, I am wanting to try out some more black-owned brands and just kind of diversify my collection. Logical Harmony has a whole list of cruelty-free black-owned brands on her website, and it's growing. Um, I know, I think she has even more that she's wanting to add in the next, you know, few weeks. So the ones on there that I'm really interested in are the, I think it's Uma Beauty or Uma Beauty, um, Ace Beauté, Colored Rain. Those are a few that I've got my eye on. Yeah, she's got a list of 50 plus cruelty-free black-owned brands. Oh yeah, Minted Cosmetics, that's another one. Let me know if you have any favorite products from those brands. Also, Briochio, I didn't realize Briochio, that's a hair care brand that is black-owned, and I'm gonna be in need of some shampoo and conditioner, and I kinda wanna try their scalp scrub too, so I may place an order. I may, there may be an order happening soon with some of these brands. I know some of them are sold on Ulta, so maybe I'll do that. But anyway, sorry, getting a little sidetracked here. I think I wanna do concealer first. I like to do this e.l.f. concealer first just because it doesn't quite match my skin tone. And I don't know, I just feel like it kind of blends in better when I apply it before foundation. How many of you guys skipped to the end of the video to see what the surprise was? So next for this Pacifica foundation, this foundation, funny story, I've already told you guys this, but I, I used to really not like this foundation, and I'm so glad that I held on to it and gave it another try this year because I don't know if my skin is just in a better place. My skincare routine has been working really well for me, probably better than it was at the time that I first tested out this foundation, so that probably is one reason. But yeah, this is kind of like a full coverage foundation which usually is not my jam, mostly because full coverage foundations tend to be kind of more on the matte side, and I'm a little bit more into like hydrating foundations. But I did feel like at first this was really heavy on my skin, and now I'm kind of loving it. It's interesting because it's, it's actually a very dewy formula, but I find that it looks best actually over a dewy primer. It just kind of like sits better on the skin and you can always set it to make it less dewy or if you like the dewy look, you can just leave it super dewy. But I feel like because it's so dewy, it's it does look a little more natural on the skin. I think at first I was trying to pair it a lot with more mattifying or like pore filling primers and it just wasn't sitting quite right. It was looking too heavy and cakey that way. So anyway. I don't know, I'm really liking it now. But then again, my skin is also in a much better place than it was when I first tried it. So I think that also plays a role. But if you look up close, I mean, I, you know, it looks like I'm wearing foundation, but it doesn't look super heavy. I'm gonna set my eyes with the e.l.f. HD powder in Soft Luminance. This is like, this is the one I use in like every single video, so that's no surprise. Before I set my face, I should go ahead and apply some of this flower blush. This is in the shade Pinched. I really like this blush formula. Lately, I've just not been drawn towards such, like, peachy warm blushes. I've been more into kind of just more neutral blushes or cooler mauve blushes. I just think those look a little bit more natural on my skin tone. So, yeah, it's not a formula thing, it's more of a shade. Wow, I feel like my sponge just soaked that up. You know what, I'm gonna apply this with my finger, actually. Yeah, look at how beautiful that is, though. It's so just, ooh, juicy and healthy looking. 
I think my sponge really did kind of soak it up though, so let's try it again on this side. I've been really into just kind of like allowing my blush to really take up a lot of space. I used to focus it like right here, and I think it just looks so much more natural when it's more just like a flush of color. And one thing I learned from a YouTuber that I was watching recently, her name is Khaki. Her channel is called Khaki Reviews Beauty, but she was showing her like cream product routine and she was talking about how she doesn't just keep blush like confined to right here. You know how like the normal beauty guru thing is to put contour right here and then blush above it and then to have like just nothing from here down. But she kind of takes her blush even further down than you might think. Just because if you were to have a sunburn, think about where your sunburn or your like slightly sun-kissed skin would be. It would probably take up, you know, a lot more of your cheeks than kind of that normal beauty guru look. And I just feel like it looks a lot more natural when I kind of just allow it to take up more space. You know what I'm saying? I even like to bring it up to my forehead a little bit. And so does she. Honestly, I think I feel like I've learned a lot from her just about like blush use. She she loves blush. Like she'll use like three or four different blushes <laughs> for a look. I'm not quite on that level yet with my blush. But I'm loving just like the heavier blush look. I'll link her channel below. She's really fun. And I love her makeup style. It's very just kind of like natural looking, glowy makeup. And also taking it like almost, you know, closer to the eyes. I've been doing that a lot lately too. It just looks so much more natural than I used to do it. So, And this is a light enough color that I don't look like a clown when I apply a lot of it, you know. So I think I will just very lightly set kind of my T-zone area. I'm not going to apply much just because A, this setting powder can look kind of heavy if you apply too much, but I do just want to kind of set like this area. Then for a little bit of bronzer, I don't like too much bronzer. I like to really focus on the blush, but I did just recently put this bronzer in my project pan, which, um, you know, we'll see how that goes. It's probably going to take forever, especially because, like I just said, I don't like to use a ton of bronzer. I also used to put bronzer like where you would normally put a contour and I, I put a little there still but I feel like it looks muddy when I do that. So I've learned to just kind of focus it on areas where the sun would naturally hit my face. I think that's kind of what bronzer was intended for. And then I usually skip contouring but if I do contour I use more of a cool toned contour for my cheekbones. I really like the Jordana contour stick for that. Um, so yeah, anyway, I've been, I feel like I've been going through a little bit of a learning process with my cheek products lately. For highlight, I chose the Aether Beauty Supernova Crushed Diamond Highlighter in the shade Pink Diamond Dust. I do really like this. It's a very kind of glimmery, wet looking highlight. It can be a little glittery, so I just take a little bit on my brush and I really just focus it right here. I, I used to take highlighter up to my forehead and I was noticing that it just kind of made my forehead look textured. I do a little bit like onto my temples kind of, but I don't take it up here, especially when it's like a very kind of glittery highlighter. I just feel like it makes my forehead look too wrinkly when I'm, I really don't have that many wrinkles at this point in my life yet. I'm excited to be back to filming. I took a little break from filming just with everything going on in our country right now. I just, it felt silly to be filming and it just felt really frivolous. And I was, I was really just feeling very down last week. I, th I think a lot of people, a lot of us were, but um, I'm feeling better now. I'm still like really taking a lot of time to educate myself and read articles and, you know, watch documentaries and just like listen to black voices on the internet and kind of seek that out for myself because there's a lot that we all need to learn. Darn it, I meant to do my eye makeup first, but that's okay. Let me go ahead and prime my eyelids. Oh, significant weather advisory until 5.30 p.m. Well, it is sunny now, so we'll see. It was storming at the beginning of this video. I guess that's just southern weather for you. That's really, it's really like that everywhere, isn't it? People always like to say, in Georgia, people are always like, oh, that's Georgia weather, like, Georgia weather is so, you know, 
unpredictable, but I'm pretty sure that's that's every state, right? Does anybody live in a state where the weather is super predictable? I would like to know. Maybe I'll move there. Eventually, I really want to get my brows actually professionally done. I've never had my brows done, which could be why I always struggle with them so much. I pretty much just pluck them whenever it's necessary and trim them, but I kind of want to either have them waxed or threaded. If anybody has a strong opinion on like which is better, waxing or threading, let me know if you are experienced in getting your brows done. My brows are, they're not super like bushy or anything as you can see. I just have a hard time getting the shape, you know? I really do struggle with my brows, so I, I would like to maybe kind of grow them out and get them like professionally fixed, <laughs> if that's even possible. I thought about getting them microbladed, but I think I'm too scared to do that. So I'm gonna start small and maybe work my way up. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna start with just some light crease work. So I think I'm just gonna go into my soft glam palette and use maybe orange soda. It's like a light peachy color. I think that'll go pretty with the green. I'm really not very experienced with green eyeshadow, so we'll have to see how this goes. But that'll be a good just transition shade. Still loving this e.l.f. Fluffy Eye Blender Brush. It's just such a good shape. All right, then I'm gonna go into Burnt Orange. This actually is the color that's in my eyeshadow roulette this month. I'm just gonna use that to sculpt the crease a little bit more. Oh, what is on there? Ooh, there was another color on there. I messed up a little because there was another color on this brush, like a dark color. And so this eye looks a lot darker than the other. Oh, darn it. It's okay, I think the green will cover it up. <laughs> Just kind of going back and forth between orange soda and burnt orange there. My theory is since sometimes green can be a little bit jarring on my skin tone, I'm hoping adding a little bit of like a peachy warmth to this look will kind of make it look a little more natural. We'll see. Okay, so let's go ahead and start putting this green on my eyes. I think I'm gonna focus it on the outer half and then maybe do something lighter on the inner. Just because I have put this color all over my lids before and it was just a little dark for me. So I did go and grab my setting spray just because I think I'm gonna apply this wet. I think I will kind of keep my hand here just to keep it from having any fallout. Oh, that's pretty. Oh my gosh, why have I not used this? So yeah, I'm kind of applying that to the outer half. All right, so for the inner part of the lid, I think I might use the gold from the Billy Beauty palette. It's kind of a warm gold. Okay, then I'm gonna take this fluffy brush again and kind of blend out the edges of that green there. I'm gonna take kind of a mix of orange soda and burnt orange to kind of help with the blending. Then I am going to take some of Tempera from the Soft Glam Palette and highlight my brow bone. For lower liner, I'm just gonna take some of this dark brown shade in the Billy Beauty Palette. I just want it kind of lightly defined. And let's go ahead and finish off with some Flower Lash Warrior Mascara. All right, I did get some mascara out here. I'm gonna let it dry and then kind of flake it off with a spoolie. I also decided to leave my lower lashes bare. I feel like it kind of just keeps my eyes looking a little bit brighter. For lips, let's decide between these two that I got. The red apple one, mm, that looks nice. That might be the winner. And then the dose of colors on repeat. That looks really pretty too. Let's try the gloss on and then we'll, if we wanna change it, we can. You know, I really like that. I feel like since this one is a little bit pinker than this tan one from Red Apple, it kind of livens up the look just a tiny bit. So yeah, let's stick to that. That is the finished Shop My Stash look. I really enjoyed all these products, really. This green eyeshadow is gorgeous. When you use it with a wet brush, I'm sure it applies well with a dry brush too. I kind of just wanted to use a wet brush this time, but it applies like the most opaque, like almost like paint, you know? 
So that is gorgeous. This is gonna have to get used more often. It's just, I don't use green eyeshadow often, but when I do, at least lately, I've really been liking it on myself. So that's beautiful. That might be my favorite part of this look. So I'm gonna go ahead and introduce you guys to my newest edition. Give me one second. Here she is. Let me zoom you guys out a little bit. Here is the little surprise that I had for you guys. We have a new addition. Can you get up close? This is Elaine. She's a little torty. She is about six weeks old. She doesn't want to look at the camera because she wants to run around and play with all the makeup. She was found outside uh, in a pool enclosure, they said. I'm not really sure what that means. By somebody nearby and they posted in this like cat Facebook group that I'm a part of in my town that they were looking for someone to take her because they weren't able to keep her just because of their landlord and stuff. And so we were like, um, we'll take her. <laughs> uh, we'd kind of been thinking about getting a third cat soon anyway, so this is, this is it. And she is so sweet. She has a little upper respiratory infection that she's got some medicine for now. I've been keeping her in the bathroom in this room just because we don't want her to pass on anything to the other cats until we know for sure that she's good to go. So she did go to the vet for the first time yesterday. She also had worms, lots of worms as most kittens do. She had fleas, which I think we got those taken care of. Those should be gone. Um, we had to give her a flea bath because she's too young for the topical stuff. So yeah, that's her. She's adorable. We think she's probably gonna have maybe medium length hair. She's made huge strides. We've had her now for about, what are you doing? About five days. So she's um, made a lot of progress. She's got a great appetite. She's been playing. She's using the litter box already. So I know a lot of you guys are big cat fans. And like I said, we haven't really introduced her yet to the other two cats. They, they know she's there and they have seen her a couple times because she's kind of run out here and They've seen each other, they haven't really like gotten close to each other yet. There's been a little bit of hissing. She doesn't hiss because she doesn't even know what's going on, but the other two have kind of hissed a little bit. But when they first met each other, they also hissed and now they're like best friends. So I think that they're gonna be getting along really well within the next few weeks once we once we get her all cleared up with whatever health stuff she has going on. But it just got really dark outside. I think it's about to start storming again, but that is that. I thought you guys might enjoy that little tidbit. I'm so excited and so in love. She's so sweet. And you know, my theory is like, if you have the room for multiple cats, you should go for it. Cause there's a lot of homeless cats out there that need homes. And I think three is gonna be the limit though. I think three is actually the maximum that my apartment allows. So this is gonna be it for a while, <laughs> but uh, she's running around. She loves exploring and just getting into things. I think we're gonna have a handful um, with her just because she's so young and she's very smart and very curious. So we're gonna have to like really kitten proof the apartment. This room in particular has a lot of cords in it. So I need to figure out a way to minimize <laughs> those as best I can, but I've never had a kitten before. Um, I've always, like even my family, we've like always had cats growing up. My parents have three cats, but we've always adopted them as adults. This is the first time I've ever had a kitten, so it's it's gonna be so much fun. I'm really excited to actually get to like watch her grow up with all the other cats I've had. I've always wondered, and I've always been dying to know what they looked like as kittens. And so the fact that we get to see her this little is just so exciting and I can't believe she's gonna be a big full-grown cat one day I just like can't even wrap my head around that she's so tiny and like I said she seems very smart like she figured out her litter box like right away oh she recently figured out how to jump down off of like someone's lap onto the floor and now she does it all the time and you can tell she's so proud of herself <laughs> for knowing how to do that she's very friendly she's not timid at all she has the loudest purr ever um, much louder than either of the other two cats so anyway Heidi will no longer be the baby I mean she'll always be my baby but I always view Heidi she's two but I view her as like a little baby because she acts like one um, <laughs> she's very needy very 
kitten-like in a lot of ways. But now she's gonna have her own little sister. So, Gigi Lou, where are you? There you are. You wanna say goodbye? We'll sign off together. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And we will see you very soon in the next one. Bye guys.